Hey guys, I'm Sandeep and welcome back to Rev Atlas and you're watching the review of the OnePlus Nord. Now this is a video that a lot of you have been waiting for so I won't waste much of your time but before we get this started please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to avoid missing any notifications from us. Now let's begin this video. Let us start by talking about the design itself. Now the design is not necessarily bad, it's ergonomically good and to be honest it functions very well. However it's not very unique and I wish that OnePlus used something else from BBK's toy box as a base and not this. It's just that Realme has been using this design for quite a lot of devices now and it has gotten stale and while this is the first device in the OnePlus camp to use this sort of a base as design, it still feels outdated to me because I've already seen it on so many other smartphones. Now there might be people out there who haven't seen this too much so for them it might be okay but I personally feel that this doesn't look all that great. Coming to a build quality however, this actually does feel very well built, there are no creaks or any other issues of any kind. And while the lack of metal is not a deal breaker and it still gives a premium feeling, it is notably less premium than the other two devices in OnePlus's lineup. Think of it this way, if you're a person who loves butter chicken, you would love to eat it from almost every restaurant but you have that one shop where you know it's the best. This comes close and you still enjoy it because it's butter chicken but it's not the same. Weird analogy I guess but hey. Now coming to the battery life, it will last heavy users an entire day of use as well even with 90Hz but if your main use is gaming then it might not last you an entire day of use. The good thing is that in case you do happen to actually deplete the battery, this can charge pretty fast as the 4115mAh battery supports Warp Charge 30T which is a 30 watt charging that will fulfill your phone's capacity from 0 to 100 in just over an hour. Now that's pretty impressive and in most cases you won't need to completely recharge it considering that most of us actually charge it overnight and OnePlus also has an optimized charging mode in order to prevent battery depletion over time and the phone learns your sleeping as well as charging patterns and sort of adapts it and makes sure that it actually doesn't end up fast charging all the time and only does so when you absolutely need it. The display is a 6.44 inch full HD plus 20s 9 aspect ratio fluid AMOLED panel and it's actually very good overall. Now I'm sure that most of you would already be thinking about the display tint issue by the time I said the word display but to be honest it was not all that much of a problem for me and it's also not present on every single Nord device so I'm hoping that it's much of an isolated case and even if not the conditions and criteria that need to be met in order to recreate that sort of an effect are very very minimal and in that sense I would say that the issue is actually being blown out of proportion. The AMOLED display is great to use both indoors and outdoors, it's sharp, it actually offers 90Hz refresh rate which actually does not make much sense in some other smartphone UIs but couple that with Oxygen OS and you have a winner. It's great for content consumption and also for creation and even for gaming it was a great experience overall. In terms of security you get both a face unlock that makes use of the front facing camera as well as a fingerprint scanner that's housed within the display considering that this is an AMOLED panel. Now both of these are quite fast and accurate as well and we had no issues in terms of using it on a day to day basis regardless of whether we were indoors or outdoors. But I remember a lot of people actually asking me about the overall speed at which it unlocks. So it actually unlocks pretty fast but it's just that the unlock animation after which it recognizes your face is a bit too long and that kind of gives you the impression that it takes too long to unlock the phone. But if you actually remove the animations it should be much faster than it actually feels like. Coming to the speaker, it's actually very loud and packs a fair bit of punch but it's a mono experience. So while the sound can fill up a room, it's not a very immersive experience if you're watching content or playing something on the phone over the speakers and your right ear is likely to enjoy the experience more than the left. Performance was smooth and fast and if you ask anybody who actually doesn't know what chipset this is packing, they would actually believe that this is an 800 series chipset and for most tasks that I needed the phone, I felt that this was sufficient. Where I probably noticed the difference was an area that I didn't actually expect and this was in the camera side of things where I felt that the processing and the processing power of the chipset was not actually being tapped into or perhaps was inadequate for the kind of things that the OnePlus Nord was promising. 
We'll talk about that very soon, but the Snapdragon 765G's chipset also is 5G capable, so whenever 5G does roll out in India, and hopefully the bands also support it, you should be able to use 5G networks in India once you get a 5G SIM as well. Now this comes with 6 plus 64, 8 plus 128, and 12 plus 256GB variants, and we have the highest end variant here for testing, and it actually does excellently well in multitasking, although I feel that even the 8 plus 128GB variant should be good enough for most if you're looking at multi multitasking. However, if you want storage, the important thing to note here is that there is no memory expansion and the bundle storage is all that you get. Now for some people, say my dad, it doesn't matter because he doesn't actually need all that much of storage but for other people who are power users, they need more storage and therefore it makes sense to go for the highest end variant or at least the middle variant with 8GB of RAM. Now coming to the camera setup, this is basically a 48 megapixel primary sensor, Sony IMX586 with f1.8 aperture, optical image stabilization, and you also get a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 5 megapixel depth sensor, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. Now the camera isn't very good apart from video and the primary camera in good light like we mentioned in our camera review, and we'll leave a link in the description for you to watch that in detail. And the same goes for the front-facing 32 megapixel and 8 megapixel ultra-wide angle cameras. So why would someone get OnePlus Nord over other smartphones in this particular price segment? And for that, there's just one answer, and the answer is Oxygen OS. Now, OnePlus has built an extremely well-refined UI, and that is something that stands apart from the rest of the UIs that are there on the market, especially at this particular price segment. And in order to actually experience that on other smartphones, you actually have to spend in and around 30,000 rupees at the very least. So if a good UI as well as software updates are something that you're concerned about, then the OnePlus Nord might make more sense than the other competitors in this particular price segment. But then the question arises, why not the OnePlus 70? And to be honest, the answer to that is that the 70 is actually better in almost every single way and the 70 makes more sense if you can afford it. However, if you can't, and in most cases, the people who are actually waiting to buy the Nord are people who are waiting to buy the basic variant which is going to retail at Rs. 2499. It's not yet available, but I'm assuming that a lot of people will be waiting for that when it launches in September, and those are the people who are actually going to be buying the Nord over the other devices, considering the price gap of maybe 5,000 rupees between the 70 and the Nord makes much of a difference for them as well. That's it for this video guys, if you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you again in the next one.